Hi, I'm Rad Linux. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit about NFC chips and how they work and how we can interact with them with our Flipper Zero. Uh, it's not actually just about chips, it's also about readers, and we'll get into that for a sec in a second. So NFC is a, a chip and reader mechanism that uses radio signals. Uh, we have a little set of antennas here in the base of our Flipper Zero and a little chip reader in here that allows us to interact with NFC chips and NFC readers. Uh, now, NFC is popular in a lot of different spaces. I think people have noticed that it's uh, commonly found now on modern credit cards, debit cards, Metro cards, uh, even some like hotels that use NFC cards uh, and chips and in, in, in cards in order to you know access your room and stuff. It's also used on some consumer electronics. So we have something like this, these Bluetooth headphones that actually have an NFC chip in them, essentially as a quick sync. So I can just tap that against my phone and it will automatically, uh, you know, connect us. And I'm off to the races. I don't have to go through the whole Bluetooth connection screen. Honestly, not that complex, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an ease of use, a convenience thing. Uh, this also allows us to do some types of like bad USB type attacks, uh, depending on what we're using as our reader, uh, specifically in the realm of like using your mobile device. Uh, because, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I don't actually leave NFC on on my phone, because it kind of is a little bit of like a weird open hole that's not discussed nearly enough. Now, I'm sure that you, there's some things in place that hold back some of the, the worst of the worst, but uh, they, they, you can do some weird stuff with this. So let's get into it. Let's do a little bit of capture and emulation off the break. So I'm gonna take these headphones that I have. We're gonna go down here to NFC and I'm gonna go to read, right? Now, there we go, I just read it. But let's do this again real fast because I wanna show you how close you actually have to be for this to work, right? Right, there we go. So it actually takes a lot, uh, or a very, very close proximity for you to be able to capture this. Uh, and we're gonna go to emulate. So we're gonna go to emulate. Now, forgive me, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've noticed in the past, I'm actually using my phone and, and OBS, uh, Droid Cam OBS to, to, to do this. So I'm gonna be using my phone as the reader as well as my camera. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of this here. So we're gonna go bloop. All right, so we can see that it's disconnected because my headphones were automatically connected already. We're gonna try that again. And now it's connected my headphones uh, to my phone and they're, they're fully functional, all set up. And we are good to go. Um, Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and uh, very simple. So we're gonna do this, and I'm just gonna back out here. We're gonna exit. I don't need to save that right now. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can, I guess, kind of see the potential here. Uh, and then we'll take it one, one step further. We're actually gonna go, and I'm gonna use one of my saved uh, NFC files. We're going to go to a classic here. Well, yeah, we're going to go to a classic. And I am going to just go here. Wait, emulating? Oh, no. Got to hit emulate first. That's important. And we can go. There we go. Oh, <laughs> all right. Hilariously, I put my phone on airplane mode uh, so that I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't get bothered by text messages in the middle of this, which I seem to have already been doing. Uh, but yeah, so you can see what, what was going to happen there was that I was about to rickroll myself. Um, and and frankly, it's 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 uh, this is where I think some of the the weirder stuff is possible, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I keep this in, in, 
place on my phone. I don't just let things open things automatically. For the most part, I try my best to, to limit some of that possibility. But you can see, again, still no internet, but I could send somebody to google.com I, by just tapping their phone. With, uh, with one of these if they have NFC open and available. And that's kind of where some of the bad USB stuff comes in uh, in certain senses. So like, yes, you can kind of force uh, somebody's phone to, to open something or open a URL. Uh, you can see that there's like call 911. Um, there, there's a few different possibilities uh, I guess I can emulate Dave and Buster cards. You know, sometimes I don't even keep track of some of the things that I have on here. And that's honestly not smart. You should really know what you're doing, playing around with. But I guess I can emulate a Dave and Buster's card. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so there are some possibilities here for, uh, for like I said, like a USB, a bad USB style thing. Now, there is a really interesting website, and I'm going to leave that in the comments uh, or in the comments, in the in the the information, in the whatever the thing is below here, you'll you'll find it. Um, to a site actually really interesting where you can create your own NFC files uh, that'll send people to like any URL you want. So that's a pretty fun little thing and a, a little little tool. I'll, I'll, I'll drop that in there. But now let's get into what we can't do with NFC. Uh, because I feel like one of the, the things I keep seeing uh, popping up in different videos is people kind of exaggerating uh, the the power of the Flipper Zero. And I've said in other videos, I think the Flipper is a very powerful device, but it has its limitations. So let's talk about that. Number one, you cannot steal somebody's credit card with this, or it's very unlikely. And if you can, that person really needs to have a discussion with their bank. For the most part, uh, the NFC chips that are in our bank cards and stuff like that may at most expose a credit card number. Now, many of us know that you can't actually do much with just a credit card number. You need the CCV, you need to have the expiration date, and that kind of information usually is not held on that chip. Uh, or not going to be immediately accessible to us through reading. It might give us a name. It might give us some other information, and that can be dangerous. So there is some truth to the the need for something like RFID blocking technology, which is really just any kind of shielding. Uh, I, I use like a what do I use? I, I use like a cigarette case for a wallet. It works great. It's a little metal cigarette case. Uh, you certainly cannot read any of the chips. Uh, in my wallet, I'm actually gonna real quick reach over here and show you that I do have credit cards in here and they're not being, uh, well, I guess I have to actually be trying to read, don't I? So we're gonna read and you can see that my little wallet does a great job of blocking my card from being read. You know, uh, in fact, uh, let's actually go take this a step further. So the, the reader, uh, you know, I've been tapping my phone with the, the reader. We're going to go, we're going to go to an emulated, we're going to go back to Rick roll. Let's do no ads this time. Uh, Rick roll, no ads. We're going to emulate. And this time I'm actually going from the other direction, right? Instead of going from the bottom of my phone, the back of my phone, touching the back of my phone, I'm trying to touch the, the f go through the phone. Essentially it doesn't work. Right, you can see nothing is happening here. Uh, so, so it really does require like an incredibly close proximity, uh, and, and you know, a lot of things can block the, the the NFC signal. So you're not really, I don't think that's, I, I, you're not really going to steal somebody's credit card information with this. Uh, in the same breath, I, I'm also pretty sure, uh, from what I understand, that you can't emulate the credit card either. So, uh, you know, just just because you've you've captured some information about it doesn't mean that you would be able to take this uh, information, you know, using the emulating feature of the Flipper Zero and then go and make you know payments uh, at like a CVS or a Rite Aid or whatever you know where they got a self checkout line or something. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to to do that. So a little bit of an exaggeration 
uh, I believe, uh, on, on the part of a lot of people who are really trying to use the Flipper Zero to elevate their likes and views and subscribers, and they're not being uh, super real uh, about what the capabilities of this device are. The other issue is something like uh, hotel keys. Uh, there, there is a, a I, I want to say deficiency, but, uh, you know, this device can read a lot of things that it can't emulate. Uh, one of those is, I believe, what's called Mifair Classic. Uh, so if we go through NFC, there are a lot of different types of different implementations of uh, NFC. And one of those is the Mifair Classic. Uh, this is, I think, what a lot of like the um, room keys for like hotel rooms use. Uh, I've actually attempted to do that at a hotel to try and copy the room key. Uh, and it was kind of a twofold issue. One, at the time, I didn't have a large enough database uh, of keys. So now I have a larger database of keys. It's possible I may be able to reach, to actually match all the keys, but it is a, a kind of a long brute forcing process. Uh, I think it took like 15 to 20 minutes for me to actually attempt to brute force the the keys. And that was when I had a lot less keys on this device. So when, I, when I'm talking about as we go to NFC, there's extra actions and then there's the um, Mifair Classic key. So there's a dictionary, uh, the system dictionary, and there's also a user dictionary. So you can pull more of those offline uh, add them to your flipper, and uh, you know there's, it enhances the amount of, of keys available for, for it to, to check against. Uh, but I wasn't able to get a complete list of keys uh, for the card that I was using, and it wouldn't emulate. Uh, and that is, I believe, a, a deficiency in the hardware. I don't think that Mifair Classic emulation is possible with this device. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure why that is. I I just know that uh, I've seen it come up a lot of times on places like the Discord, uh, where people are asking about things like trying to get into a room uh, or copy room keys. And you know, you might be able to capture that information. And it's possible, like I've said in the past, that you might be able to capture that information using your Flipper Zero, take it to another device, and then emulate that. But as of right now, uh, that is not actually a possibility. Now, there is another fun little feature here for NFC, and that is the, the detect reader function. So uh, this is a little bit of a newer one, and I actually haven't gotten this one to work yet. Uh, but supposedly, by taking this device uh, and using this detect reader, we can uh, touch on a, a reader a bunch of times and catch what are uh, uh, a bunch of attempts, uh, then bring that back into our phone app and have our phone calculate uh, to figure out what type of uh, reader we're working with. Again, this is a fun function that I haven't actually gotten to work yet. So if anybody else has some, some heads up knowledge on how to make the tech reader work properly, uh, I'd, love, I'd love to know more about that. It seems like a really interesting feature just to, to know what kind of reader you're interacting with uh, so you can kind of know how to target it better uh, or whether or not the device will actually be able to emulate it in the end anyways. So yeah, this is NFC. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff we can work with as well. Uh, you know, definitely check out online. Uh, go to go check out Uber Guido's repository. It's got some really nice NFC stuff, and I think it helps you kind of walk through the concepts of NFC. Like I said, I'm going to leave again uh, the link in the in the the uh, section below so that you can also make some of your own NFC payloads. Uh, that you can you can drop yourself. Uh, so you know, thanks for hanging out. I hope you had a good time. Uh, you know, I don't usually do this, but uh, you know, I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers, and I, I would love to to be able to pass that mark. So you know, drop a like, drop a subscribe if you feel like that's something that you you know, if you feel like that's in, deep in your heart. Uh, you know, stick around. I'm I'm trying to 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 build this channel up into a, a space where you know I can pass along some information on the, the basics of this device, 
Uh, you know, I'm, I want to get back into doing the Flipper News again. Uh, and I also, uh, I, I really want to start expanding a little bit more, you know, into some of the ways that we can play with the, the firmware itself, not necessarily through uh, community firmwares, well, although those are those seem relatively interesting. I, I want to expand into how we can uh, basically hack our own firmwares, change the animations, uh, change some of the the various things and i i do create some fun pixel art i don't know if you've checked out my my page but i have some fun pixel art up uh kind of revamped my my, my page a little bit uh and i i want to start getting into creating some some animations for the flippers so hopefully we can talk a little bit about that as well thanks so much for hanging out hopefully i'll see you again on rad linux